Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. I'm on a mission to inspire and support you in reaching your goals in life and business. Do you want to know the secrets to growing a profitable DJ business? Tune in to hear real life stories from DJs across the globe who have grown successful DJ businesses. Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. Today, I have DJ A-Rock. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. Hello. <laughs> hey. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Ready to get this party going. All right. Woo-hoo. You don't stop. I've learned this about you from, uh, we met online. We were both, were we both a part of a, a virtual conference or? Yes. We, the yes. DJ and TV conference. Great, yeah. So that's where we connected, and you were you were awesome. You reached out, you know, started the the friendship. So thank you, because it's all about networking, you know. Networking. Yeah. So one thing that was really cool that you have a huge uh, history of playing on cruise ships, and I would love to talk about that today. I, I mean, you do so many different things, so we're gonna dive into all of it. But let's start out with you telling us, did you get into DJing? Um, I've been DJing for uh, just over 20 years. I started back in high school, uh, pursued it in college. Um, my College degree is audio engineering with a minor in broadcasting with a specialization in sociology. So um, it kind of works together, right? The study of people and being a DJ and broadcast and everything else. And I pursued that through college and I DJed all through college. And by the year outside of college, you know, I wanted to keep doing my passion, but I had to find something that was more secure. Um, and then I opened up a store a year after college. Wow, so, so where, where is that store located? So I am in Ohio, I'm in Athens, Ohio. I'm in rural Ohio, an hour and 20 minutes south of Columbus, southeast of Columbus. Um, Columbus like the closest major city to where I'm at, um, closer to West Virginia than I am Columbus. So I'm about 30 minutes away from the tip of West Virginia. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the store is in the same, is actually, I never left the college town. So I came here for school and I, I've been here. So I've been here for 22 years now. Wow. That's, yeah. that's a commitment. You must really enjoy your, your, uh, business. <laughs> so my business is pro audio. Okay. Pro audio. Um, so we do commercial installs as far as AV. We do classrooms, uh, churches, uh, conference centers. We also do car audio. Our premium market was car audio when we first started. Um, and then we branched into home stuff. And then we got more to the college conference rooms and everything else. So all this teleconference stuff we were doing five to six years ago. Um, so, you know, it's something I love doing because this is, this is my passion. I, I love being around it. But over the years, you know, it works with my pro audio. So mm-hmm. we sell it and we install it and I use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I was actually going to the school, going to school for the same stuff, but I dropped out and had a, and started a family. <laughs> hey, it happens, right? It happens. It happens. You know, yeah. it, it, it's one of those things like I used to kick myself in the butt. I say, you know, cause I went to school to work in a recording studio um, and have my own recording studio and so forth. And my, this is probably if anybody watching this is going, I'm not that old, but my class was one of the first classes in the country to use Pro Tools when it first came out. Because my teacher had a in with the, uh, who owned Pro Tools at the time? Oh, I can't think of the company had it. But the same people that, that do all the video stuff. But yeah, we were one of the first people to use that software when it first, like Pro Tools 1. 
I nice. feel like Pro Tools 20 now. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. so. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I that, don't know that when that was. <laughs> I don't know when that was, but I know for me, um, my first year at San Francisco State, the program was really impacted. It was a popular school for for broadcasting and um, audio production. So I ended up not being able to get into any audio classes. I ended up in some film classes. Um, I really don't remember a whole lot. I think I was too busy like trying to work and live on my own and like do all that. But um, but it's interesting. Same like, thing. Yeah, you know, so it comes around because like my husband has a music studio. So I know like when I'm ready to learn, like I, I have that available. <laughs> You know, just like anything, that that degree is nice, but at the end of the day, it's all about can you actually do the job? Yeah, I got this degree, but can you actually do the job? You know what I'm saying? That's for me, yeah. it's like, you know, I kind of wish I would have pursued my small business before going to college. You yeah. know, I kind of could have been four years ahead of the curve, but hey, yeah, it's done, it's done. <laughs> School loans and keep it moving. <laughs> so tell me about about DJing on the cruise ship. How did you get into that? So how I fell into the cruise ship was I go to the DJ Expo every year in Atlantic City, except for last year, of course. Um, so I went to the Expo. It'd be six. It was exactly six years ago um, in August, and I attended the Expo and. Um, I was walking around and I had just got back from a cruise. And I was like, why is Carnival set up at this DJ Expo? They had a table set up. They had a table, Carnival Cruise Line. I'm like, why is Carnival set up at this Expo? So I walked by this table about three or four times at the Expo. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go check it out. So my wife was with me. She's like, what, why is Carnival? So I was like, what are you guys here? Y'all giving away free cruises? And the guy was like, no, um, we're looking for DJs to come work on a cruise ship. And it was like, bing, because me and my wife was just on the ship for vacation. And we were we were talking about how awesome it would be to work on a cruise ship. I mean, because the DJs was there. I was like, man, this got to be the life. I'm like, this would be awesome to work on the cruise ships. So here we, we fast forward six months later. We walking around this expo. We like, why are they here? Let's check this out. And then they was like, well, we're doing open interviews. I was like, all right. So it just so happened. I had bought my laptop with me. There's like, we meeting up in conference room, da da da, on the second floor, be here at this time. You know, we set it up. I'm like, cool. So, you know, and I'll try to keep it short. So we sitting, we outside waiting at the conference room. So another another DJ was out there with us. Like, yeah, man, I'm about to go in there. I'm about to smash it, dog. I'm about to get this job. I'm, about to, I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, 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 man. I'm about to knock it out the park. I'm like, cool. So I'm sitting on my laptop, like, all right, whatever. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna go do my best, but. I'm not gonna be out here like, yeah, I'm about to smash it. <laughs> so dude in there for like 20, 30 minutes, come out, head down, man, good luck, right? Come to find out his 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 computer wasn't working. He was having all kind of issues, right? I go in there, I set my stuff up, boom, boom, boom. I do, it was supposed to be like a 20 minute set. They stopped me after like 10 minutes. Boom, stopped me and said, hey man, let's go out in the hallway and talk. So we go out in the hallway and talk, and they talking to me. And, you know, this was the immediate supervisor for the DJs. And he says, hey, you know, you know, are you interested in the job? Like, yeah, man, this is great. He's like, so if we call you, are you gonna be willing to work? I'm like, well, that's an issue. He said, why? I said, man, I got a store, I got a business, I got employees, I got priorities. You know, this is, I was already in business for 14 years at the time. You know, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't know, like, but yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Call me, just blew it off, you know? Cause I'm like one of those people, I don't want to be that guy driving home. Like, damn, I wish I would have did this. You know, everybody could have, would have, should have. Like you had those regrets. Like, ah, if I would have did this, I didn't want to leave the expo saying, I didn't want to have the opportunity or I didn't take the opportunity. Long story short, they called me two months later, offered me a job. I blew it off. I said, I can't go, I'm working. I was like, dude, I got this business. It was like, well, when can you leave? I was like, I can leave in January. So I literally had to train my manager. You know, I had to show my wife, but my wife had no idea anything about the store. She never had to deal with it. So I had to show her some of the small stuff with the store, but I had my manager. I had to show him like, hey, you need to be me for a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be gone. 
So a couple weeks turned to almost a hundred days. I left like January 1st and get back to like April. So they, I went on for two week training and they gave me a contract for three months right after that. On the second largest ship in the, co in the company. <laughs> so, so I went from training on a ship with 2,700 people on it to going to work by myself with a ship with 4,600 people on it. Wow. And it, that was going on six years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it be it was it's six years this week. Uh huh. So, so I, I've heard about I've heard about these these guys being at the expos. Um, so what's happening now with all that? I mean, are, are, I don't even know if you, are the cruise ships going at all? Like. <laughs> so so right now no. So I got off the ship last January, January like January 29th, 2020 is when I came home. And then everything stopped March 14th and nothing has moved since March 14th, far as we guess. They finally got most of the crew members back home by like August. It took mm -hmm. them close to five months to get crew members home due to all the airlines and countries and all the other stuff shut down. So no, they haven't. Um, they were supposed to start selling in December and that got pushed back to January, which now got pushed back to March. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. 47, it's 47 of us with the company that's our DJs for the 25, they sold two ships, so like 25 ships. So wow. it's 47 of us to stay in rotation. Yeah, I was on a virtual yeah. meetup of some sort with DJs and there was a woman on there who was like, kind of still stuck on the ship. And I was like, damn, <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, man, to get all those people home and off the boat and safely and quarantine when it all was hitting. Luckily you were already home, huh? <laughs> I was already home. Yeah. So I was good. Yeah. Well, well the, the issue that came up with was trying to get people to to uh, to airports. So the airports are shut down. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it it's a great opportunity. Like I call it DJ boot camp. You know, I hear DJs like, yeah, man, I'm the best DJ out there. So I challenge you to go work on a cruise ship. Man, you guys just play line dances all day. I'm like, Go work on a cruise ship. It's, it's DJ boot camp because you don't know who your crowd is to the day of that that cruise starting off, and you have 4,600 people on board from ages six months to 106 years old, and you gotta entertain those people in certain areas of the ship. Mm -hmm. I say so. I would be at the club and I would start with top 40, and I may play some reggae, and I may play some soca, and, you know, and I may play some dance hall. Now I go into some Latin, now hit some reggaeton, throw some trap, back to some 90s, a little bit of 2000s, back to some reggaeton, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and that's a three or four hour set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I learned the difference real fast between reggae, soca, and dance hall. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, know? yeah, so you play this? No, like, yeah. it's a lot. So did you get to um, travel? What was like some of your favorite places that you got to, to travel to? I mean, the perks, the perks of the job is that, you know, most of the time our, our work is in the evening, unless it's like a, a, a sea day. But a port day, we usually won't start working to maybe four or five o'clock in the evening. So we got all day at the port. So if the ship docks at nine, we can get off the ship at 9.30 and be off to three o'clock um, walking around the port. Um, Grand Cayman, Aruba, and Cozumel. Mm. Favorite places. Mm -hmm. nice. I never made to Australia yet because they have ships in Australia. So you can do Australia, New Zealand, um, and they go to Fiji Island and a couple other ones. But I haven't hit none of those yet. Mm -hmm. One day. Nice. Yeah, I hope to DJ yeah. on the cruise ships one day too. But um, <laughs> it's a little hard with the family. Yeah. <laughs> If you know what though, you know, there are 1300 crew members on board and, and a lot of them are married and a lot of them got families, you know, so you, you'll have them, you know, 80% of they check and go home, you know, especially people over in some of the other countries in Europe, um, you know, they have their grandparents watching the kids while the husband and wife is on the ship working, sending money home to take care of the kids, the grandmother and the entire extended family. 
Mm. So, you know, it's, a, it's it's not like a whole bunch of singles on board. I mean, it's people, this is their six month job because they can make in six months what it takes them to make in 24 months mm. in their home country. So, okay. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. One of those deals. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tell us about what you've been doing this last year, how you have shifted. I mean, you, I have talked with you. You are staying busy as ever. Um, so what is your secret? Too busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my telecommunication degree has come into play over the last nine months, basically. Um, like everybody, when they all this started, I jumped on Twitch back in April when I was doing Twitch and Facebook. And then the summertime, everybody was outside. So Twitch kind of did like a down slope because people weren't in the house watching it, you know, so I kind of, you know, laid back off of it. Um, but with Twitch, I was double dipping. I was doing my Twitch broadcast while recording my Saturday mix show. So I do a, a recorded Saturday mix show here in the area um, for the past three years. So I, I usually, I'm sitting here just doing a mix, but on Twitch, I can double dip get my Twitch hours and record my four hour show. So over the summer, I was still doing things, but then I got approached in mid August from the university and they was looking for a Friday night dance party. And it's like, hey, can we do a Friday night dance party? We want to engage students. We want to have you on and want to have you do some giveaways. I said, all right, yeah, we can do some giveaways. I say, but what if I can give you something better? And I was like, what do you got? I said, I'll call you back on Monday. <laughs> So I call you back, give me a call. So I start calling people, got in my network of friends. I say, hey, you know, would you be interested in performing live on Zoom? Yeah. Then I call some comedians up. I say, hey, would you mind doing comedy shows and how much? So then I went back to the university and said, hey, look, I can get you a dance party, I can get you live music, and I can get you comedians. So we can have a variety show. They love the idea that they split it up. They said, let's do a dance party and live music on Fridays, and we do comedy on Tuesdays. So let's try it out for five weeks. Five weeks turned to 13 weeks. So while I was working with them, of course, they networked. Another guy heard about it. He texted me. He said, hey, you know, give me a call. I said, hey, what's up? He said, I want the same thing you're doing for OU for, for my school. Because they got to provide entertainment because only half their students came to campus and the other half was doing virtual. So we went from, from September 1 to just before Thanksgiving, I did 40 virtual shows. A little bit more than that because I did some private events for some uh, other clients. And then we started doing virtual tailgating when they started football season up for the college. Mm. And they, they love it. We was bringing in all these comedians and most of the talent if not all, came from the cruise ship, people I worked with. So I had Latin music. I had a guy from, um, where is he from? Oh, man, what, one of the, I can't think of it. Uh, Dominica, he was on the steel pan, playing steel pan music, right? So I did a, a thing with him, piano players, uh, duos, soloists. So I got a little bit of everything. So, and here we are in January and right now I'm contracted for 36 virtual events between the two schools. Wow. So, wow. so yeah. And so, and then even when weddings was on pause, a lot of my weddings moved to next year, but then the people who didn't want to move, I say, Hey, what if I can get you streaming virtually? So I started setting up zoom meetings for their family. I recorded it on my camera that I use for all my YouTube vlogs. I took that camera. I said, I will record the video for you on the hard cam and I will zoom it for you. Just don't cancel the wedding. Same price as me being there with 200 people. There's like, all right, we're gonna have 10 people, but we wanna see if you can record the video. No edits, just record it and give us a raw file. And can you zoom it for us? Done. Nice, so nice. I did three weddings like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then word get out because now people are now still looking for the summer and say, hey, can you Zoom our wedding mm -hmm. or can you record it? I'm like, I'm not a professional videographer, but I can record it for you and give it to you on a flash. Track. Right. So, so when you're doing that, are you also DJing the event? 
I'm doing it all. Okay. You I'm a one help? man show. You don't bring help. <laughs> What's that? You don't bring help? No. <laughs> I will I will bring my wife with me if we're doing a photo booth. I, I got a photo booth business too. Uh -huh. I used to have three photo booths, but I couldn't get people to run them. So I sold two during the pandemic because people got the extra money. And I said, I got these photo booths for sale. So I had two photographers in the area, buy two of my photo booths, and then we still kept one. Nice. So yeah, it's just it's just me. I was set up, um, I got so much stuff I can like, I'm literally DJing live, and then I have a tripod set up with the Zoom and an iPod, well, iPad, and then I have uh, my uh, Canon on a tripod with a shotgun mic just recording, oh, just one way shot. Uh -huh. And just hit record. Zoom started and then DJ and just let it all run. Uh -huh. Nice, nice, nice. That's some goals of mine to be able to confidently do all of that. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's hard to get people to want to go out on a weekend. Everybody want to go out and get a check. Oh man, you know, I see you out there, man. I see you out there. I see DJ run at you out here every weekend, girl. You know, hey, can I, can I, how can I get on? Well, you willing to work Saturdays? Oh, well, my kids got a baseball game and then my daughter got cheerleading and you know, my wife says she, I can't in. But you want to go out and DJ, right? Yeah, yeah. What's one you want to do? You want to make some money? Like people don't realize what we sacrifice on a Saturday. Like we all getting paid, but what have we missed? You know what I mean? My friend's weddings, I missed because I was DJing somebody else's wedding. Like they want me to DJ their wedding, but already had stuff booked the year out for that date. I'm like, I can't do it, bro. I would love to DJ. I'd love to be there, but I can't. Yeah, that's something I'm like, hey, friends, if you're like thinking about getting married, can we like talk about dates first? Because I'm booked out. <laughs> I got my whole summer booked right now. I got three weekends open. Wow. Three weekends from April all the way to right now to the end of October. End of October. That's like six months, right? <laughs> or something. <laughs> That's well, awesome. I usually only book. I use only book from April to the first week of October because usually the second week is all university events. So I do all the homecoming events and all the big events for the fall, and then I go get on the ship. I'm usually on the ship every year for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Nice. Do you get so to bring I go to the ship the week of Halloween and stay there to after New Year's. Wow. Do you get to bring your wife or are you not with her during the holidays? She, she'll she come. She'll book a cruise. Yeah. Yeah. So she, well, I book a cruise with all my discounts and then she come on board with me, you know, for the week. You know, the, the, the holidays, I try to get her on board a week that's not the holiday because uh -huh. I, we work a lot for the holidays. Like we're busy for Thanksgiving and Christmas and not counting the years. Yeah. So yeah, wow. it, those are the busiest times on the ship. So if you want to take a nice relaxing cruise, don't do it on Christmas. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's busy. You would think it wouldn't be, but it is the busiest cruise of the year next to New Year's. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just so, some free uh, advice. So, so, so for marketing your business, I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of word of mouth because you've been putting in the work for years. Do you do any advertising online? Um, I tell you what a lot of people slip up on, you know, Wet and Wire is, is okay. For, for my area, you know, we, we don't have a dedicated region for my area. So I'm close to Columbus. So I fall in the Columbus market. So I'm competing with the guys in Columbus. I get a lot of phone calls from people from Columbus. They don't realize I'm an hour and a half south, which I'm willing to drive, no problem, you know? Um, so I get a lot of calls snap, but this is the secret. This is the double, triple secret. If you really want your business to grow, and I learned this, literally spending $60 on Google can make your business grow. And it's with, uh, when you, set up your website or your Gmail, you can put your business as a Google business. Like a lot of people don't have, they, they have a business, they have a website, but they're not registered on Google. Once you officially register your business on Google, now you can start running Google AdWords. 
right? So now in the Google AdWords, 60 bucks a month will start building analytics for you. So after about 90 days, it starts working for you. So you put 60 bucks in there, under 200 bucks for 90 days, Wed & Wire wants $200 a month. None against Wed & Wire, it works for me a little bit, but Google works the best. And what I have done in the past couple of years, I have pushed my brides and grooms to leave me a review on Google before they do one for Wed & Wire. Because everybody Google search, everybody phones tied into Google. Yeah. Wet Wire is still a great website with all the you know links, to all the vendors and reviews, but everybody still goes to Google to read reviews. So, and then um another secret, you know, and tell me if you know this, but even with Google, you need to name your pictures and don't put up image one, two, three, or four. So you basically name your picture. Say DJ run that here, San Francisco, California at the venue of San Fran. You put all that in the title and then you put it up to your Google page and the algorithm will find that. So people say, I wanna look at the venue of San Fran, I'm looking to have a wedding. Your image may pop up when they start searching Google images. Okay. So that's been a huge, I literally went through and like, I had a conversation with Google, like they literally call you. You can talk to someone from Google. You can set up a phone call, a meeting. They will walk you through it and tell you how to set it up when you start doing AdWords. And it's like, you need to go through and change all your pictures up. What do you mean? He's like, you need to go through and rename all your pictures, get rid of image 55544 and name it what venue you were at. Or put your DJ company in that picture. So when people look it up, the algorithm will find that picture and it will be associated to your Google account and your website. Well, thank you. That was really helpful because I have been running a Google ad for weddings um, this whole last year. I I thought, you know, if I if I put a little money into Google ads, then hopefully my website will, you know, go be placed yep. top. So that was part of my theory and was like um, just experimenting. Really, I have someone in my business mastermind who just kills it with her Google ads. So I was like, I'm gonna try this, but I have to go check my uh, photos. So after we get off this interview, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> the yeah. photos, the photos are the key. The photos and the geo tags. Like if you got weddings with venues, tag the venues in those pictures. You can make the title as long as you want. So if people, if you got a venue you're at every single week make sure that name that venue with your name is in that photo on google so when people start looking up their venue locations like one of the venues down here like i got them tagged on so much stuff that my picture pop up in the top 10 when you look at this wedding venue because mm -hmm. i tag them in everything i do because i'm there almost every other weekend mm -hmm. so that that right there you know that helps for advertising of course wedding wire and the knot is now one company now um and then uh, my best advertising is my, my YouTube videos. I do, uh, I do video vlogs. I've been doing them for a while. I just never really took them that serious about four years ago. And like, I had a YouTube channel for 10 years. And I used to put some stuff up, a little bit this. But the past four years, I've been legitimately posting videos, putting them up, and not to make money off YouTube, but to show my clients what the venue looks like before they even get to the venue. Like I bet I have better pictures and videos than what the venue has. So when people say, oh yeah, like I had two clients email me last, last week for the same venue, different dates. I sent them all my spiel and I sent them a YouTube link to the venue. Uh -huh. I say, all right, here's the wedding I did. And I had a speaker set up outside and I had the inside set up and I had up lights set up and you know I had speakers running here and wireless up hmm. 10 minute video, they click it, they watch it. All right, how how we get in touch with you? How how we get signed up? How can we skitter date? Hmm. That's super so. smart. And that that gives me motivation to really get that footage when I'm there and go the extra mile of filming everything. It's something I've slowly been working towards, you know, is like, it's always a little challenging because you're doing everything else. And then you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Set up the phone on the tripod and make sure it's this way. And is it still running yep. <laughs> and all of it? But you know, um, it's definitely 
definitely worth doing and you're proving that to me. <laughs> I love I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna tell you the, uh, the best thing you can do is go buy you a, a GoPro and a tripod and you just put the GoPro and just have it in your book bag and get you a, a, a Gobi mount. And basically you can set it up while you're doing time-lapse of your setup. Because when you have your phone, you pulling out, you're doing this, you're stopping, you're starting checking messages, reading stuff out. But if you get the GoPro and just set it up in the corner and just let it run, then you get home and you just edit out what you want. You can take what frame you want off of it. So I want to take this picture and I want to say this frame and so forth. Mm -hmm. You can do all that too. Yeah. So that's something that's something to keep in mind, you know, say having, I mean, and then the main thing, you always got your phone, right? Like, I, you know, you know, I tell people, I say, this is not a phone no more. This is a million dollar investment. I say, because you can make a million dollars off this phone. Mm -hmm. Like I, I talk to small business owners, right? That's the thing. I've been in business and retail for 18 years. So I'm a salesman, as you can tell, right? I'm, I'm going to sell you something you don't even want. But <laughs> I tell people with your phone, right? You got that phone on you all the time. So that phone is always in your pocket, your hand, your purse. I say, there's no reason why you don't have pictures of that venue or a couple pictures from that wedding or something. Because what it is, it turned to advertising. You know, it ain't no reason why you don't have your phone and you're saying, yeah, I'm here at blah, blah, blah venue. You know, if you want to have your wedding, make sure you come see me here. Look at everybody having a good time. You're on the microphone, everybody all having a good time. Ooh. <laughs> uh -huh. That right there is your 30 second commercial for all your social media. Yeah. Yeah. A packed dance floor, you on the microphone, talking to everybody, recording it, and saying, everybody having a good time? Yeah. <laughs> Done. Exactly. It reminds me of uh, the reggae singer Shaggy, who I was uh, lucky to open up for one time, but he was playing at a festival and he his whole thing was he was doing those like selfies with the whole crowd, like he would stop. <laughs> it was at a festival and I could see me in the very background, my arms up, like, like yep. there I am in the sound booth. <laughs> but yep. yeah. You know, you know who started that though? The EDM artist started that. Uh -huh. the, EDM, the EDM artists really start putting it on the next level because that crowd that was coming was that social media crowd. Yeah. So now everybody want to be in that selfie, yeah. right? So they used to show up with their phones, take pictures. Next you know, now they got a guy with a $1,500 camera in front of them taking a picture to look like a selfie. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, yep. But it's marketing. Yeah. Because everybody want to see if they pictures in that, if they face in that picture. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that, you know, that's, that's what I tell folks. I say what word of mouth is one thing, but showing people what they can get. Like we got all our packages listed on our website. Some people say, oh, what's in this package? Nobody knows, no one cares. We're using a QSC system and we got a set of Rain 12s or we got some CDJ 2000s and we bring this brand new controller out and I got the best of the Mac and this. No one cares about that. <laughs> they want to see what you have. Mm -hmm. What kind of lights? Let me show you a picture. They don't care how that dance floor is lighting up. They just want to know how much it's gonna cost. <laughs> I got these, I got these, these lights going around. I got these thousand dollar up lights. And they don't care. They want to know: Can you make these lights pink, blue, yellow, or green or white? <laughs> how much? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Wow. Well, hopefully, you know, you're inspiring people by, you know, being leading by example. And thank you for being generous enough to share your secrets with us and your journey. And <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? No, I mean, you can hit me up uh, on Twitch, DJ A Rock on Twitch. Uh, you can find all my stuff at arockentertainment.com or djarock.com or I'm on Instagram at DJ A Rock Ohio and Facebook, all the above. Um, you go to my website, everything's linked into the website, bio, YouTube videos, virtual entertainment, all on the website. So um, photo booth stuff, all there. So. But yeah, you know, thank you for having me. I, I feel privileged because I know all your other podcasts are all female DJs, you know, so. <laughs> Oh, it's great to mix it up. <laughs> mix it up. Well, you know, it's uh, it, it's 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 one of these things, right? I, I tell folks, you know, 
we are we as DJs we always looking for the next best record what's gonna be that banger you know but right now it's like how can we make ourselves grow like this is this has changed the game up forever because now why would somebody have to hire a DJ in Ohio for their wedding when they can bring somebody in from San Francisco to do their wedding virtually mm -hmm. true, true. What, it, just wait it's gonna be a big screen in a wedding hall with no DJ and it's gonna be some DJ in Europe doing a wedding in California. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, somebody said the other day that I was I was technical and I was like, that's a first, you know, like, but this this has forced me to get more technical, utilize YouTube, you know, research things, ask, not being afraid to ask a stupid question, like, <laughs> lean on our friends, <laughs> make more. Well, I'll tell you so, like, what I, what I got set up here, I got a switcher I usually have in front of me, so excuse me, but usually when I'm doing stuff right, I can go through and change up the look. Yeah. So I got the video wall, um, I can go through and have this set up. So now I got the scene there. Um, and, it, you know, if people watching, like, so we're on Zoom, right? We're on Zoom right now, but I'm dropping all this into Zoom. So what I have done, which other people can, I don't mind sharing the knowledge, right? Who would thought you can get paid for DJing on Zoom? Like how many people get money for DJing on Zoom right now? I've done for events, it. right? <laughs> All right, exactly, right? And people are like, oh, you can't do it, but how can you make your presentation better? So yeah, I can DJ in front of green screen, but what if I can DJ and have your logo on the front of the screen, right? So now I've done several college events, like commencement, graduation events, that we have speakers come in and I ran the whole event as an MC and DJ had the logo uh, on the screen. I had a ticker on the bottom. So, you know, technology, you gotta be able to embrace it. And then like when I'm doing some of my other virtual events, I will bring in live music. So check this out. So I say, ladies and gentlemen, come all the way from Colombia. We got our Latin duo, the Morano duo. Hello, everybody. We are Nati Leo Murano from Cali, Colombia. And everybody, welcome to this International Music Night. Woo! <laughs> that's rad. Yeah. So that's so, one of the groups. I love it. I love it. I that's one of the groups I'm using <laughs> for my virtual stuff. Yeah. I want to collaborate on a, on a party and bring um, some of your talent. Um, I am on the board of directors of a theater here in town called the Redwood Playhouse. And we've been racking our brains on how could we do anything really <laughs> and uh and uh we they tried to do some some stuff but yeah i'm gonna present it to the board that we get something virtually that's actual has some talent booked <laughs> see if there's any budget well i can well i got something extra special for you and i'll share it on here so when we first started we were just using people from the cruise ships because i knew they talent you know, to work on a ship, you got to know 200 songs. You know, you got to be able to play X amount of days out the week, X amount of hours a day, right? Um, so I knew the talent I was booking. I knew they can do what I needed them to do, right? Appeal to all ages. But as the project began to grow, we're now linked in with a ton of writers from Netflix, Comedy Central, and Sirius doing podcasts. So if you're in a the theater group, I got a ton of writers <laughs> who would be more than happy to probably come do something with you and they're right in LA. Wow, cool. So they, cool. they are open to anything right now. Huh. Yeah, very cool. I haven't done any theater myself. I've thought about it, but uh, I was throwing a lot of uh, community family dance parties and I was doing them at this particular venue. It's perfect because it's a theater. It could be dark at like two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> it was a really great right. space for it. So uh, then uh, they got me on the board and it's just been a fun learning experience. But I was hoping to get into some theater uh, once it gets back going because it's always fun to try new things. You know? There we go. <laughs> I can get you some magic acts. Yeah. I got some magic. I was thinking. I, got, I mean, 
like a virtual lot. magic, like a magician, a comedian. Uh, those two would be fun, you know, entertaining for, for all, well, I would say all ages, but <laughs> the comedian, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta make sure. I'm doing, I'm doing all that. So this yeah. semester for the next nine weeks, we got comedians coming in every Tuesday. Um, every Monday we're doing live music. So we got duos coming from Canada. I got a violinist, electric violinist coming from Lithuania over in the former you know, Soviet Czech Republic. Um, I got a young lady coming in to teach salsa classes from Colombia. Um, <laughs> I am doing a drag show with a piano player in drag from Canada. Um, we're doing a cooking show. Uh, we're doing magic. I got a magician coming in from the UK. Wow. That's the power of virtual. Yeah. And all these are people I work with from the ship. Yeah, so fun, so fun. Well, thank you there. for being on the show yep. in the mix and for sharing everything with us. And go follow DJ A-Rock on all platforms. He's very generous with sharing his knowledge. If you need anything, hit, hit us up. <laughs> thank you all for watching. Bye. Bye.